Okay, today we've got a really interesting integral on the board. We have something from 2020 MIT integration B, problem number nine. We have the integral from zero to two pi of cosine to the 2020 x dx. Okay, and some of you may notice if you've been watching my channel for a while, I've already done this problem. This is the exact problem from MIT 2020. I did it back, I think in November, maybe. Anyway, just briefly, when I did this video the first time, I used an entirely different method and I hadn't gone over power reduction yet and I needed all those videos so that this video, I don't want this video to be like an hour long. So what I can do now is because I've done introduction videos on power reduction and I've done some similar videos, I can keep this video kind of brief and then in the description I can give you links to other videos and resources that may help explain some of the things you, don't, you may not understand. So let's just look at our generic formula for power reduction for cosine. So we'll have cosine n of the x, where in this case n is 20, 20. And I'm just going to call this thing i sub n. The formula for this will be cosine n minus 1x sine x over n plus n minus 1 over n i sub n minus 2. So this is a nice formula, but all it does is reduce the power by 2. Right, so if we were starting at 2020, all this does is get this into an expression of 2018. So just on the face of it, if all we had was this, we'd have to do this integral like a thousand times, right? Because we get to 2016, 2015, and we'd just be integrating like this over and over again. But now we do have some conveniences going on. Like, okay, so we look at our bounds. We know we're dealing with a bound of zero to two pi. So if we think about evaluating this, we're still gonna have an integral here, so we won't worry about this part but this part is gonna be evaluated from zero to two pi. And then if we think about evaluating this, when we put sine, if we put two pi in for sine, sine of two pi, that's zero. So for that first part, this whole thing's going to zero, but then we put a zero in at sine, and this whole thing's going to zero. So the way it turns out, and we don't just need our bounds to be two pi, if it, it can be any, um, the bounds can be at any multiple of 90 degrees, because you'll notice like if say if this was pi over two, well then the cosine term zero. Same thing with three pi over two or pi or whatever. So we have this set up where this is going away. This is all zero. So with these bounds, we can really reduce our formula to n minus one over n, i sub n minus two. And like I said earlier, so we're in a situation where we would need to like execute this over and over and over again, right? But we don't actually have to do that. We can kind of just look at what happens. Like, let's just look at this in a little more detail. So we have our n minus one over n, then what's gonna happen here? Well, we do the same formula again. Let's just go over here. If we look at i n minus two and we use the same formula, well, if we put n minus two over here, minus one over n minus two, just kind of using this format, pattern matching, here we'll have i n minus four. Okay, well, this is the same thing as n minus three over n minus two, i n minus four. So then we could take this value and plug it in over here and we're gonna have n minus three over n minus two to the i n minus four. Okay, so that's one iteration, but then we can just do the same thing over again, right? We'll have n minus one times n minus three, then we'll have n minus five over n n minus two n minus four i n minus six. And of course, I'm not gonna bore you by doing it a thousand times, but what we can notice if you just think about repeating it over and over again, this top term here is gonna be n minus one double factorial. This is what the double factorial is. It's just like the factorial, but it skips a term. So it stays like all these terms are gonna be odd and all these are gonna be even, skipping one. And then that means our bottom term here and the denominator is gonna be n double factorial. And then one thing I kind of skipped over, so like we have an even power here and that's important, because if we keep reducing this down two at a time, we'll get this eventually down to i sub two, okay? Now if you do i sub two using this formula, two minus one is gonna be one over two i sub zero. In an odd double factorial, our last term is gonna be one, and an even n double factorial, the last term is gonna be two, and then we're gonna, for just our, at the very end, we're gonna have this i sub zero. So with this, we're actually pretty close to having a formula for everything we need to do with this integral. But what's this i sub zero gonna be? Well, this is actually really easy to find because we can just do the integral. Okay, we'll just look at zero to two pi, cosine, so this is our n right here. So cosine of zero dx, but that's just one. Okay, so we're integrating one, integral of one is x, evaluated from zero to two pi, 
that's just going to be 2 pi. Okay, so now we know that our I sub 0 is going to be 2 pi for these bounds, okay? And I think now this is where we can go back to our integral. This integral is just going to be I sub 2020. And so using this formula to figure out what I sub 2020 is going to be, we have N is 2020, so we're going to have 2019 double factorial over 2020 double factorial, and our I sub 0 is going to be 2 pi. Now from here, we don't really want to try to calculate this whole thing, so we could leave it, but maybe you're not comfortable with double factorials and you don't want to leave it this way, so let's see if we can get something a little nicer to, to express this. What I want to do is we have this formula over here on the right for handling double factorial, and this only works when n is even. There's another similar formula when n is odd, but we've got this formula for the even case, which just puts it back into form of the factorial. Our k value is going to be, k value is going to be just n over 2 here, so we know what all these things are. You may notice that this right part right here is actually uh, n choose k. So you can also write it this way in terms of n choose k. So then what we can do is we can take this part and use this formula. So our n is 2020, so we're gonna have 2020, using this we're gonna have 2020 factorial, two to the n, so we're gonna have two to the 2020, and then our k in this case is gonna be 10, 10 factorial, and then we'll have our two pi. I'm just going to abbreviate this using the n choose k notation. So we're going to have this as 2020 over 1010, meaning exactly the same as this. The only thing we can do, okay, so we'll have our pi over here. We can take a 2 over 2 to the 2020, and we can write this as 1 half 2019. And that's it. There's the solution. I know I didn't cover a lot of detail on the double factorial and some other things, so what I'll do is I'll provide a link in the description if you want some more on the double factorial. I have a quiz on the double factorial. I also have a quiz on power reduction integrals. Uh, so that's all in the description. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.